Apple makes a whole lot of different laptops these days, but which one is really best for you? You can choose from four different screen sizes, three different processors, two different lines, and thousands of dollars of your hard-earned money are on the line. The last thing I want you to do is make a mistake, so which one should you buy? In this video, we are doing the ultimate MacBook buyer's guide for 2023. Let me go through all the models, tell you which one you should buy, which models you should avoid, and also tell you about one model in particular that you should not buy at all costs. It's almost like Apple is trying to scam you. It sounds kind of disgusting to say that, but it's also sort of true. Let me explain. So unlike many other Apple laptop videos here on YouTube, I'm not going to bore you with tech specs. I'm not going to tell you the pound per pound difference between different models. I'm going to keep things simple and tell you the four main things you need to know in this video. I'm going to keep it simple. going to give you direct answers. I have multiple Apple laptops here. I'll tell you my experience with them if they're worth it. And uh, that sort of leads me to thing number one you need to know. And that is that there is one Apple laptop model you should not buy. You should avoid at all costs. And that is the 13 inch. MacBook Pro. But wait a second, Robert! I can already hear the comments now. Why are you saying that? Look at the price. Look at the M2 processor. Isn't this the perfect middle ground computer? Many would think that yes, this is right in between the Air and the Pro, which means you want a little bit more power than the Air, but you don't want to spend hundreds more on the Pro. Isn't that what this is? Isn't this sort of the perfect compromise laptop? Well, no. Honestly, it's one of the worst Apple laptops you can buy for a couple of big reasons. Well, yes, it does have the M2 processor inside, giving it the latest Apple Silicon, and while it does have a fan to, in theory, keep that uh, M2 processor running cooler, there really is no other redeeming quality about this laptop. It's got a worse keyboard compared to the Pro, the display is worse than the higher-end MacBook Pros, uh, it's got the touch bar, which really isn't doing you any favors, it's not going to get any updates anymore since Apple does not have it on any other laptop but this. It's got an older design compared to the other laptops Apple sells, and really for the price, it's like the worst value Apple laptop you can buy. There's really nothing pro about this laptop, and you'd be much, much better off going with either an Air or a Pro. And that nicely leads us to the second thing that you need to know in this video, and that is that for 95% of you watching this video, almost all of you watching this video, the best Apple laptop you could buy is a MacBook Air, either the 13-inch model or the new 15-inch model, because this laptop is basically almost perfect in every single way. If you haven't looked at a MacBook Air in quite some time, let me tell you that the times have certainly changed, and while the initial MacBook Air that launched in 2008 was very thin and light, but it was cutting edge and expensive, the MacBook Air has transformed over the years, and since the move to Apple Silicon a few years ago, this has become the de facto Mac for most people. It is the best Apple, really, computer period you can buy, and the value you get from this computer is absolutely amazing. While the new, more modern industrial design that Apple introduced with the Air last year is great and all, it's, you know, fine on there, but it doesn't come close to the other big things on this laptop. One is the display. Yes, the notch is there. And yes, this doesn't have a promotion like a Pro, but everything else about this display is really good. Two great sizes, 13 inches or 15 inches. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's colorful, and it's going to be great for whatever you want to do. If you want to edit video on here, you need a nice display, it's going to be great watching YouTube. YouTube videos, Netflix. The power in the MacBook Air lineup is also really good these days as well, as the M2 processor isn't just great for writing emails, writing papers, doing research, stuff like that, but you can do some photo, uh, video, and app development work on here as well. You're not going to have as much power as the pros, but if you want to get into photography, you want to start a YouTube channel, you want to edit 4K video, you want to do some app development, the M2 processor is going to be more than enough to handle that, and you're getting a really versatile machine with the air. This is not going to limit you from starting some new company or a new project or a new hobby. The air lineup also has no fan, so this is always 100% of the time super silent. It's got a very nice keyboard. It's got a spacious trackpad. Speakers are good, not as great as the MacBook Pro, but still pretty good. And then battery life on here is simply amazing. Apple rates this for up to 18 hours, but like in real world use, you can go days and days without charging. Like if you're a 
student, you're not gonna make it through like one day of classes, but maybe like four or five days of classes if you're just taking notes and browsing the web. Battery life on this is really good. I use this sort of on and off during the day and I probably plug in once a week to do a full recharge and that's it. And to tell you the truth, I have put my money where my mouth is here. I have spent my own money on a M2 MacBook Air. I have owned this for the last year or so. I think it's been about a year. And after using it, I love it. And there are only two things I dislike about it. The first is that I went with the midnight color that looks really nice on apple.com and the press images looks like this nice dark blue. And while it is nice, it's only nice when it's clean because uh, it's a fingerprint magnet and after 10 minutes of using it, you get smudges and grease and just like gunk all over it. It's just sort of gross. So I probably wouldn't recommend the Midnight unless you want to keep this thing clean. What I have done and something you can certainly do is go the D-Brand skin. I just got like a simple black uh, skin on my MacBook Air so you can still sort of see the blue highlights but everything else is uh, sort of covered by a nice uh, fingerprint resistant skin. I'll leave a link uh, to this down below if you want to check it out. D-Brand has a lot of different options. Um, so I probably wouldn't go with that color, but uh, besides that, uh, it's sort of nice to see those accents. And then the second thing I dislike is that you only get two USB-C ports. You do get a MagSafe port, which is nice, um, but they're only on the left side of the computer. So while it's fine to have most of the ports here and a headphone jack uh, port here, most of the time it's not a big deal. There are some instances where I would love to have another USB-C port on the side, or maybe even Apple to compromise and do one USB-C port here and then another here. Not a huge deal for most people, uh, but uh, I'm kind of nitpicking here because every Everything else about this computer is really that good. And again, for 95% of you, you should buy an Air. It's really that good. Moving on from that, the third thing you need to know is that for the other 5% of you, those who are real professionals in the video, audio, photo, or app development world, and you really need more power, I probably don't have to tell you that you should really consider a MacBook Pro because you're gonna absolutely love Apple's higher end laptop. Again, I don't need to sell you on the specs or the performance or the ports or the keyboard, all that stuff. Uh, but I can tell you from personal experience, I have been running this channel um, basically since I got this laptop whenever it launched um, with a 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, and it is absolutely incredible. The performance of Apple Silicon at the high end is amazing to see. The keyboard is fantastic. The display is really great. ProMotion is nice, so I'm not a huge proponent of ProMotion, so it's not a big deal to me. Speakers are surprisingly good, like so good that you can edit video on there and you don't need desktop speakers. The speakers are really that good. Love the selection of ports. So happy the SD card uh, port made its return. And there is just not a lot to dislike about the MacBook Pro. It is really, really good. Good. Yes, it is more expensive, but if you need the raw power for the video or photo or app development work or whatever you're doing, if you know you need that power, uh, the MacBook Pro is going to be a very worthwhile investment. And I know one of the most common types of comments to see in a video like this one is, how do I know if I should go Air or Pro? How do I know if I need the extra power of the Pro over the Air because you don't want to be limited and stuff like that? It's sort of hard to know if I can't give you specific advice. And if you do want specific advice, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you. But generally speaking, if you are in the photo or video world, this is how you make your money. Time is of the essence and this is your career path. I'd recommend the investment in the Pro because it gives you a lot of power and room to sort of grow into. If you're not using this as a career and you're doing this more as a hobby or you're sort of getting into it, or even if you're sort of intermediate and you're sort of not a pro level yet, um, but you're sort of getting there, the Air with that M2 is going to be very, very good. The Pro is great, but it certainly is a lot more money. All right, and finally, number four is sort of the odds and ends, little things that you should know about buying an Apple laptop that'll sort of make your life easier. One of the biggest questions I see all the time is, where do I go to save money? Should I buy from Apple directly? Should I go to Best Buy or B&H? Amazon, stuff like that. Um, the short answer is it doesn't really matter unless for sometimes, if that even makes sense. Was that even a proper sentence? Anyways, sometimes Apple does do discounts, but they're very rare. If you're looking for discounts, oftentimes you can save money by going through third parties because they have their own discounts. We will do our best to find the very best deals and leave them linked down below. So uh, definitely check the description because oftentimes you will save more money by not going through Apple. And then I also see a lot of questions on specifications, uh, RAM, storage, processor, stuff like that. I'm a little bit of an outlier with storage. I use a lot of external storage, so internal storage isn't a big deal for me. Though I will say, generally speaking, 
If you've got a lot of photos and videos and you don't want to worry about space, I think one terabyte is going to be the way to go. It is going to be a paid upgrade and it's not going to be as inexpensive as a external SSD. But if you'd like to save a considerable amount of money, I definitely would recommend an external SSD. In fact, I'll leave a couple of my favorites down below, the ones that I have tested that actually work really well with the Mac because that is not the case with all of them on Amazon and uh, sort of give you some options. If you want to have some external space but not spend boatloads of money that Apple will charge you, uh, this is a really great way to go. But if you don't want to have a dongle or any kind of external thing sticking off your computer, it's probably going to be worth it. There's also the question of RAM and simply put, I'll say this, if you are thinking about RAM and you're worried about RAM, then just get more RAM. I'd go with at least 16 gigs if you care about it. I am someone that likes to have Chrome open and Final Cut and Photoshop and stuff like that. So the more RAM, the better. And if you're, again, if you're thinking about RAM, you probably should go with at least 16 gigs. But for my aunts, uncles, my parents, my grandparents, my wife, for example, she has a MacBook Air. I just got her the base model. It's been totally fine. Eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD. She is totally happy with that computer and the eight gigs has never been a problem. And then on the MacBook Pros, you can specify which M level processor you'd want, either M2 Pro or M2 Max. Again, it is very hard to give general advice here on the internet without knowing your specific situation. Though I'll say generally speaking, I'd recommend going with as much performance as you can afford. And finally, in terms of accessories for your MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, I'm not really big into the accessory space, though there are two categories I would certainly recommend. One is for monitors. If you're looking for a good external monitor to pair with your MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, uh, we did a whole video sort of rounding up the best. I'll leave that linked uh, up in the corner here and down below. You can check that out and see our top recommendations. And then a good laptop stand is crucial for good ergonomics and usability and just sort of being able to elevate uh, your MacBook Air, MacBook Pro up to a good position. And for that, I think I found the best solution at least the best I have tested, and that is the High Rise from 12 South. This is the High Rise Pro for MacBook. In fact, I actually just showed off another High Rise from 12 South, their High Rise 3 wireless charger, and this sort of brings the great design, build quality, and functionality that the wireless charger has and brings it over to your Apple laptop. To give you sort of a highlight reel, the High Rise Pro is really pro in every sense of the word. Great design, great build quality. 12 South, of course, really known for making some of the best Apple accessories on the market. A couple of things in particular I love. One is that this can actually be height adjustable, so you can sort of adjust it to get the right height that you're looking for that's most comfortable and that's going to align with your setup. I've always wanted to see a wireless charger in this space, and 12 South is making that happen with the High Rise Pro. There's sort of this secret area, the secret crevice, this channeling that you can use to place a MagSafe charger stealthily underneath this, sort of in that base area, so you can charge your iPhone, your AirPods, whatever you want to use use Qi wireless charging for, slap it on the wireless charger and it's going to charge. A great way to save space. It's super versatile. And again, design, build quality, everything here is really, really nicely done. 12 South always making great things. And the High Rise Pro is definitely my favorite laptop stand. Definitely the best I've ever tested. All right, everybody. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this roundup? Which Apple laptop do you have? Which Apple laptop are you looking to get? And again, I'll give a call to you guys. If you're looking to get an Apple laptop and you don't know which one to get, drop a comment down below. I will gladly help you decide which one you should get. Again, we're going to do our best to find the very best deals you can find on Apple uh, laptops on the web, and we're going to compile that list and leave them linked down below. So be sure to check the description for the biggest savings on Apple laptops. Um, and let me know your thoughts on this. Do you like the Pro? Do you like the Air? Are you sort of torn between the two? Let me help you decide. And again, just as my cautionary tale, don't buy the 13-inch MacBook Pro because it's just not worth it. As always, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, you can drop your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys as always for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle, and I'll see you all in the next one.